Warbreaker, book one in the Warbreaker series, assuming we do eventually get sequels by Brandon Sanderson published in 2009. This review does contain spoilers, so if you haven't read this book, you should do that first. I've also got a non-spoiler review available if you're interested. Anyway, I've been wanting to review a Brandon Sanderson book for a while now. Fantasy is my favorite genre, and Sanderson is certainly one of my favorite active writers to date. The Mistborn series is absolutely brilliant. But trying to go back and review books I read years ago, or reviewing one of his many sequels, I don't know. Sequels especially are tough, given that the number of potential viewers per video drops considerably. The book Warbreaker follows several characters as they struggle to prevent this seemingly inevitable war. Along the way, they come to understand the history behind Halandran society and the returned who seemingly rule over it. Not all is as it seems. My favorite thing about Sanderson's novels is his world building, and this book doesn't disappoint. Who would have ever thought to use colors as the central component in a magic system, or that possessed souls could be used to awaken objects? Admittedly, the color thing threw me off briefly since color is just the way that light reflects off of different surfaces. It's not a force that can be drained from objects. But hey, this is fantasy, and Sanderson, as always, puts a lot of thought into it. It's not just the rules that this magic system and world adhere to that make it believable. It's the language of the people. It's the religions they follow that are fully intertwined with this unique system. Even the swearing bolsters this feeling of a world that's lived in. Colors, the iridescent tones, Claude's phantoms, Oster, Lord of Colors, between the religious and magical elements, these make sense. And the plot, it's full of surprises. I'm not saying I always loved the reveals, but they kept me guessing. I didn't know where the novel was going. I didn't know who was good and who wasn't. When it's revealed that Poncal is actually behind everything, that worked. The setup with Bluefingers was clever, even if I wasn't entirely sold on his motivations. And I liked Light Song's sacrifice for the God King to restore his tongue. Even the stuff about Vasher's true identity and Claude's army, Actually, I don't know about that one. It's a bit contrived, rather reminiscent of the ghost army from the Lord of the Rings series materializing out of nowhere to save the day. Yeah, I had a lot of problems with this book, starting with tropes I've become increasingly aware of in Sanderson's stories. The self-proclaimed witty character, the stubborn female character whose stubbornness wins the heart of another. On the whole, the main characters, they're not great. I had difficulty connecting with any of them. Ciri is a confrontational, naive princess, Vivina is a narrow-minded, self-righteous princess, and Lightsong is a useless and incredibly sarcastic god. To make things worse, Lightsong isn't just uncompelling. He doesn't do much to drive the story forward. He has no real goals or interests, at least for a large chunk of the book. He constantly talks about how useless he is and takes pride in that. And his one-dimensional portrayal is the kind of thing that I'd expect from a side character, not a main one. Light Song, along with the two princesses, is at the heart of this story, but he lacks the personality and drive to make me care. Even when Light Song does finally start doing things, the self-deprecation continues. It's annoying. Does every word that comes out of his mouth have to be sarcastic or witty? It's all just too much. He's not likable. Then when it's revealed that Denth, Tongfa, and Jules are actually bad guys, it didn't sit well with me. The whole thing felt unearned and cheap. Up until that point, Denth was probably my favorite character. Sure, Denth talks about how he and other mercenaries are able to divorce themselves from the morality of their actions, the betrayal, it's set up to a degree, but I didn't get why he was a mercenary, why he helped start a war. He doesn't want all the breath from Vivina's original contact, instead offering it to her. He teaches Vivina the basics of using her new Awakener abilities. He helps her discover herself and find what it is she wants in life. The characters do mostly improve over time, but it can be hard for me to get back on board with characters I don't care for, and Vasher and Lightsong's captures didn't help. Pretty dumb of both of them. Lastly, the ending feels rushed and thrown together. Claude's phantoms, Siri and Vivina's reunion, Vasher's apparent divinity, a new threat elsewhere, it's all introduced and tentatively resolved in the last few pages. We get a lot from Lightsong's perspective throughout the book, and his death is significant, but it's glossed over so quickly. The buildup for him seems to serve very little purpose. The same can be said for Siri. A lot of awkward, romantic stuff. In conclusion, Warbreaker is okay. The characters may not be as good as characters Sanderson's done in the past, 
but the world building is fun and the story is creative. I just felt like he didn't put the same level of effort into this novel. I'll give it 3 out of 5 stars. I did like it overall, and I was tempted to give it 4 stars, but I just, I couldn't do it. There is a lot of squandered potential here, which was one of the things I found so frustrating. It should have been better than it is. It's not as good as the original Mistborn trilogy, or even Atlantris, but I'd say it's almost on par with the Stormlight Archive series. It's similarly paced, though Kaladin is a more engaging character to follow. Anyway, that's all I've got. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and thanks for watching. Peace.